Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we review hundreds of hands from poker vloggers across YouTube to bring you 10 of the best. Hopefully you're enjoying the channel. If you are, show some love by clicking the like and subscribe buttons. It really does help out the channel a whole bunch. In this week's episode, we've got unusual poker coaches, we've got legends of the game, and we find out what would have happened if Brad Owen hadn't have found that exact parking spot. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's make a start. At number 10 this week, and we're excited to welcome a new poker vlogger to Suited Aces, Matt Vaughan is playing in the World Series of Poker main event from last November. He's included this week though because he's only just uploaded this video. Yep, we don't know why it took him six months either, but enjoy this hand. But in this next hand, 31k in the stack, I'm basically at half of starting stack, haven't won a significant pot yet. Early position makes it 600, hijack calls, button calls. I'm in the big blind with jack nine offsuit. And while this is close multi-way, I think it's connected enough to make the call. That's what I do. And the flop comes out nine high, nine four deuce. Checks to EP who C bets 1.1K and it folds around to me, leaving me with a very easy just call here. Actually, you could probably argue for check raise, but when it's so dry, I think call is probably better. The turn is a deuce of hearts. I check and he now C bets bigger, 3.5K. Not the Funnest spot in the world, but definitely not folding. I make the call. Rivers the queen of clubs. I check and he now bets 10K. I don't know if you've been keeping track, but I started the same with 31K. So this is a pretty substantial portion of my stack. Normally in the main event, people tend to have it a ton in a spot like this. They're just going to be way too value heavy. They're going to be scared of bluffing and they're going to mostly have the best hands. However, he kind of has to barrel pretty weak holdings to arrive here with a strong one or just have run into a flopped set, something like deuces, fours, or nines, which are blocked heavily by my own hand and the board. Additionally, the turn brought in a flush draw that did not complete on the river, although the jack of hearts is a little bit of a detriment here. So unless he's barreling a hand like ace queen, king queen, queen jack on this turn, which to me seems unlikely for him to even see bet the flop in the first place and to then barrel, uh, all my instincts are really just saying this is a bluff, but it's a really tough spot. If I call and I'm wrong, I'm really cut down and I my options end up being a lot more limited. So I tank for a long, long time. Nobody calls clock because it's the main event, but eventually I call and he shows seven five of hearts. So nice to be validated here. And an important piece of information comes to light, which is that he opened up basically under the gun with seven five of hearts pretty wide and the fact that he tripled off here also shows he's quite capable so that's something we're gonna have to file away for the future at nine this week and wolfgang poker is playing at the agua caliente casino in rancho mirage california he's in a two five cash game and if you've ever wondered how to get maximum value when you flop a set of aces this is how when we look down at pocket aces and I'm in the small blind, six limps to me. Yes, you got that right. Great action here at Agua and I re-raise it to 40 bucks. I think that's a good price. Maybe I could have gone 50 considering the fact that all six people call. Yes, all six people call the $40 bet and uh, we're going seven ways to a flop which comes ace, queen, jack, bang, we flop top set. Set of aces, very draw heavy board here. Hand like king 10 already has us beat but there's two spades on board so maybe somebody has a flush draw. Given the fact there's seven of us in the pot, I usually would start with a check but I have such a nutted hand here and I can get value from hands like ace, queen, ace, jack, queen, jack, maybe even a hand like queens or jacks. I don't know how people play these days. I bet out for $65. When you have a hand as strong as top set you're not really going to get called in too many spots but don't tell these players that three players call under the gun plus one under the gun plus two and cut off our buddy jesse puts in the call as well still four ways to the turn which alleviates all of our pain if someone had a hand like king 10 it comes the jack of clubs we fill up and it's pretty sure we have the nuts here i don't think anyone has pocket jacks in their range given the fact there's 475 out there let's target anyone with a singular jack in their hand i bet out for 115 dollars the only person that puts in the call is our buddy jesse Jesse, he tosses in the 115 and we're off to the river which comes the king of diamonds. 
Not really sure if this is a great card or a bad card for him. Might scare him off as any 10 now has a straight, but the board is paired as well, so uh, he's got a lot to be worried about. He only has around $300 left in his stack, and I rip it in. He thinks about it for a little while, hems and haws, before tossing in all of his remaining green chips. Sorry, Jesse, those are coming my way. I turn over top boat, and uh, he doesn't show his cards. We're going to take down that $1,300 pot to end the night. Let's freaking go. Number eight this week, and Branson is playing at the Hustler in California. He's in a 5-5 cash game, and we're pretty sure all hell would have broken loose if his opponent would have had pocket fives in this hand. Hopefully things turn around and I pick up ace four of hearts on the button. The cutoff limps I raise to $25 and the big blind and cutoff limper make the call. The flop comes out queen five five with two hearts. It checks to me. I have a flush draw but since the board is paired I make a small c bet of $25. The big blind calls, the cutoff folds, now we're heads up to a four on the turn. The big blind leads out for $50. Kind of strange, I get the sense he's trying to take the pot away from me. I do have a flesh draw and now a pair of fours, so I make the call and the river is another five. The big blind bets $75. Now I'm thinking, is he betting small with a queen to squeeze me for juice? Is he betting small with a pocket pair for thin value? Or is he just trying to take the pot away from me? I close my eyes and listen to my heart. I, can be your, your baby. I make the call, he shows Ace Jack, and I win the pot. At number seven this week, and Rampage Poker, your boy Ethan is back at the bike in California. He's in a $2,200 No Limit Hold'em tournament, and this is the kind of hand where you're just willing your opponent not to hit the river. Starting off the final table action, I pick up pocket eights in the hijack. There's a plus one open to 13,000, and here, happy to make the call. Everyone else folds. Let's go to a flop heads up. The flop comes king eight six rainbow. Obviously an amazing flop, but it's as dry as it gets. He decides to continuation bet 10,000. Here playing in position, don't think I can raise because it's hard to find many bluffs on this board. So I decide on just making the call and seeing what happens. The turn comes the king of hearts. Boating up, the board is paired. Brings that back to a flush draw, and he once again bets out 25,000. And again, do I have any bluffs here when this king is so good for him? I'm not sure and happy to just make the call for now. Don't think I need to raise as, like I said on the flop, don't have many bluffs. And also, I just don't know what he can call besides having a king. So let's just hope to see a brick river or whatever. We obviously essentially have the nuts here. I make the call and we're off to a river, which is the queen of diamonds. Not the best one in the world as he certainly can have king queen or pocket queens as played. But surprisingly, he decides to go for a check. Wow. Very weird line. Obviously have the best part of my range here with a full house. And what should I do? Should I bet large? Should I bet small? I think when I bet large here, it seems to scare away a lot of bluff catchers. Like, can't really get much value against hands like pocket jacks, tens, or even a queen if I size up really large. So I decided on a smaller sizing to 22,000 and he thinks about this spot for a while. And after his decision, he does the thing that I think I hate the most, which is a check raise to 78,000. Oh God. I take my time here and think this out because this is obviously a really weird spot with the full house. Obviously I have a very strong hand, but I don't want to give away a bunch of chips early on at this final table. I'm thinking that he's never taking a line like this with trip kings. I think trip kings is just so strong to bet, bet, bet all three streets and check raising here just seems like a huge overplay. I'm thinking in my mind that he has to have a boat and it's a tricky spot. Facing this raise here, it's only 50,000 more to call and considering the size of the pot, I'm getting four to one. Like no way I'm ever folding here obviously with the full house, but I certainly am uncomfortable at this spot as it's hard to find hands that I actually beat. After a long time, I just end up making the call because I can't fold, and he surprisingly shows pocket sixes. Wow, definitely could have gotten stacks in on the flop or turn here, but I'm still happy to chip up in a huge way. Didn't get max value, but what a huge cooler set over set. At number six, and close to broke is playing at the Horseshoe in Baltimore, Maryland. 
He's in a 2-3 cash game. And as if the flop wasn't good enough. But in this next hand, we're playing a little more of serious poker. When early position decides to limp, and there is a button straddle on, we looked on a king-10 offsuit. I'm going to go ahead and isolate this wonderful vlog watcher. His name is Stefan. Huge shout out to him and all he does for his community. I make it $50 to go. Only he decides to make the call. We're going off to a flop that is absolutely... It's almost kind of fair. Maybe unfair. It is my own meetup game. So when it comes king, king, 10, rainbow, we've got uh, to find a way to make some money here. Stefan checks it over to me. I decided to see bet for a puny $15, like, I don't know, 1% of the pot or something goofy. Stefan can never fold for that price, so he makes the call. And we're going off to a turn card that comes at Jack of Clubs. When he checks over to me, I think at this point it's time to ramp up the pressure. I make it $85 going somewhere into like 60 or 70% of the pots. He ends up making the call. We're going off to a river that comes another king bang this is just goofy at this point like i don't even know how to react quads i haven't had quads in what feels like a year and twice in the same day at my own meetup game is just kind of feels like uh i don't know maybe it's a little just i don't know it's it's awesome though i can't i can only say that i tell him immediately that uh just make sure to fold i'm gonna jam he checks it over to me i end up doing just that and jamming he eventually does throw his hand away and i show the table once again that we have quads this is the six or seven table we've hit on the night. It's been going pretty great to this point. And I just feel super lucky to have been uh, finding a way to chip up in these little spots. At number five this week, Andrew Locke makes a second appearance on Suited Aces Poker, playing in a home game, a one, two, no limit hold'em cash game. And it's a nice bluff, but it's in a top secret location. As I call a $12 raise from the button, with three six of diamonds. We go seven ways to a raggedy seven five deuce rainbow, giving me a gutter and backdoor diamonds. Big blind leads for 15. There are three callers and a call from the button as well. Four street comes a king of diamonds, so I pick up the backdoor flush draw, and this time action checks to me. Good spot to semi bluff here, and I bet 100. Only under the gun one calls, and the river comes a brick deuce of hearts. Under the gun one checks, and while bluffing on paired boards is tough, that's the only way I can win this hand. My read on the situation is that my opponent is unlikely to have a king, so the target is pretty big in terms of trying to garner a fold. To go into a bit more detail, it should be tough for my opponent to call a bet with a seven or five, and pretty much all of his missed draws have to auto fold, and that would include a hand like ace of diamonds. All that said, I fire 265, and he open fold 6-8 off suit. It's a friendly game, so I show the six high. Nice to get this one through. Number four this week, and Brad Owen is playing in a 5-10 game at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. And this hand would never have happened had Brad not found that exact parking spot. Once we sit down, we begin play at 12-21. There's no time to get settled. The very first hand of the session, we're dealt pocket aces in the hijack. I raised a 30. I don't realize that the cutoff is called while I was getting my camera set up. I think everyone is folded, and I almost turn my cards face up as I excitedly say, Literally first hand. Luckily, I quickly realized that the cutoff put chips out there and still has cards, so I try to save it to make it not seem like I was just about to show everyone that we have aces. First hand or get involved. We might have done a sufficient job. Everyone at the table probably just thinks that I'm a weirdo for being this excited about playing immediately. We're heads up out of position. The flop comes king jack three with two clubs. I keep my streak alive, flopping an over pair or better with aces. I bet 40 for value. We have the ace of clubs, making it a lot less likely that our opponent will be on a flush draw, yet he calls anyway. He probably has one pair or perhaps a straight draw. The turn is the ace of hearts, giving us top set. I actually don't love seeing it because if we were up against a hand like king queen, the opponent won't feel as comfortable putting in money with second pair and will have picked up a straight draw. We also lost the lead if we're up against Queen 10. We still can't let the opponent see a free card. I bet 60. The cutoff doesn't seem to like my $60 bet. He wants the price to go up and raises to 200. We've got the second nuts and relevant card removal, making it way less probable that we're up against a flush draw or two pair hand. Plus, we didn't get three bet preflop like I imagine we would have by pocket kings and pocket jacks. So the main hand that I put the cutoff on is a straight with Queen 10. There's still no chance that I'm folding, but I'm not fist pumping about getting raised here. I play conservatively and call for 140 more. This pot is getting large, and the opponent only has 710 left in his stack. The river is the seven of spades. We finish the hand with the second nuts. I check. The cutoff, who's an older gentleman, still likes his hand. He fires for 410. 
ordinarily I jam for the remaining 300 or so that the opponent has behind. Here, I really don't get the sense that I have the best hand, but I can't ever fold. Yeah, there's not much for you to have other than the nuts here, I call. Yep. Nice hand. This is the first hand for me. <laughs> the cutoff has exactly what I expected. He turned the straight. If I had shown up two minutes later to the table, I'd have 700 more dollars. It's a brutal way to start the session. The very first hand, we get cooler. At number three this week, and Doug McCusker is playing at the Capitol Casino in Sacramento, California. He is in a 1-3 cash game. And if you're interested in taking private lessons from Doug's poker coach, let him know in the comments of his original video, which you'll find in the description of this video. All right. Player opens for a raise to 15 from plus one. I call from an opposition with two eights. Everyone else folds out. We're going heads up to this flop with $34 in the pot. Flop comes out ace, jack, deuce with two hearts. Not a great flop for our particular hand, but our opponent checks. Here I can either take a stab at it, trying to represent an ace, but I decided to check it back and see what comes on the turn. And we get an eight of diamonds, so what a beautiful card. Now our opponent leads into us for 20. At this point, I probably should raise, but I figured if he's leading now, maybe he'll bluff at the river. Now's the time to raise. He made your set. He could be betting an ace. He could be betting a draw. He could be betting something that he won't call. But you need to get value now. If he has an ace, you're going to build a bigger pot and get all in. If he just has a draw, you're going to charge for it. And if he has nothing, you're not losing out because he's not going to be firing on the end. River card comes as a queen of diamonds. Not the greatest card in the world. It does bring in king 10. And he bets for 50. I'm thinking that he might have slow played something like a big ace on the flop. Maybe something like ace jack or ace queen. So I decided to go for value. And I raised to 125. Thinking that he probably couldn't re-raise me with much because I might have a hand like king 10. And I definitely don't think he has king 10. So after I raise, he thinks for only a brief minute before shoving all in. It's only like 70 something dollars more. Just fold. Don't pay him off. He has you beat. Just fold. I just toss in the call thinking that I'm beat, and he does show me 9, 10 of clubs. So I definitely should have raised on that turn card, but I think he probably would have called and still got there. At number two this week, and close to broke, is playing at the world-famous Borgata Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey. He's in a 2-5 cash game. And this is what it must feel like when you're making all the right moves. To be quite honest, I haven't played a hand at this table in the last like two hours. The game's pretty slow. Wolfie ends up opening it up to $20. I'm in the hijack with king seven of diamonds. I end up making the call. The button makes a call and we're going off to a flop that comes. 955 rainbow. Interestingly enough, Wolfie decides to check. I decide to check and the button decides to bet $35. Wolfie decides to make the call. And with the action on me, I think there's some like micro chance that King High could be good here. And if not, I feel like when Wolfie doesn't see bet this flop, there's a good chance that he has some kind of ace high and I could possibly get him off that hand later on. And moreover, there's a diamond out there. I have a backdoor straight draw, a backdoor flush draw, and an over to the board. So why not get a little mixy with our friend here? I make the call for $35. We're going off to a turn card that comes a six of hearts. This now does introduce the backdoor flush draw. Not the one I was looking for, but it does give us a gut shot. With the action checking over to me, I think this is about time that I take over the reins of the hand. I'm the one that can have 8-7 suited here because I already have a 7 in my hand, so it's very likely that I can have an 8 as well. In this specific instance, I don't, but the fact is my range consists of a ton of 8-7s. Anyways, I decide to bomb it here for $125. Button decides to make the fold and Wolfie makes a call. And we're going off to a river that comes a four of diamonds. Again, it doesn't change a whole lot to the board texture. The flush draws brick, so... It's kind of like whatever was there on the churn is probably still going to bet on the river. The really interesting thing here, though, is that Wolf decides to use this as a block bet. He bets out $40, and now I'm left in a really precarious situation. I can never call this because I'm wrong, and I feel like if I had a massive hand on this board, I don't think I'd raise small here. It's not like I'd just make it like 150 bucks or 200 bucks. I'd like to go massive. I mean, I did it earlier with a really big bluff, so it seems only right that I do it again. It sucks that it's, I'm going to be doing it with a bluff again, but... 
I have a really important blocker being the seven of diamonds. I don't block the frust draws that exist and I don't block ace highs or random holdings like that. So after a bit of thinking and the simple fact that I'm not here to soft play against a friend of mine, and this just goes to show you that, you know, both of us aren't, I end up jamming $775 in a massive overbet compared to the size of the pot. And the point being here is that I'm kind of representing a very polarized range. I'm saying I have quad fives, you know, a boat in some fashion or a straight. I'm never ever doing this with just a pair of nines or tens or jacks or queens or whatever. I'm trying to say I have this board absolutely crushed. With the action on Wolfie, he goes deep into the tank before eventually deciding on a call. Great call by Wolfie. I end up flipping over my hand and he shows pocket queens. He played that really, really well. I really, really liked his check back on the flop. That's the, that's why I always preach about is being able to check these flops ends up getting you paid in situations that you wouldn't otherwise. If Wolfie C bets that flop, maybe I still float, but more than likely, I just probably get out of the way of the hand. He ended up making the most against me. He knows I'm an aggressive player. I think he knows I'm a solid player. So huge props to him. I did end up putting him in quite the predic predicament on the river. He ended up making a really strong call there. Huge props to him. And at number one this week, we're back with Rampage Poker. Ethan is still in the $2,200 tournament at the bike in California. And in this hand, he plays against an absolute legend of the game. Once we're in the money, we're in level 18 now. And this is quite the doozy of a hand. Action folds to me. I'm in the small blind with clean jack off suit. I decide to limp and call the 6,000 big blind. Maria to my left says, screw that limpy poo shit. We're going to raise to 18,000. Raising it up to three big blinds. It's two big blinds for me to call. Very easy decision here. I have a playable hand. Let's see a flop. The flop comes pretty darn good. It's queen, four, deuce, two diamonds. I check it over to her with top pair on a dry board, and she continues for a bet of 13,000. I think about this spot for a while because I think I'm supposed to raise here. Although the jack kicker is unfortunate, I definitely can raise to protect my hand against overcard, some flush draws, and with top pair, definitely need some protection. Anyways, as played, I decide on just making the call, not going to raise just yet. When we see the 10 of diamonds on the turn. Now with the jack high flush draw and top pair, I start with a check as played. She decides to amp up the aggression and bets out 34,000. Uh, pretty weird spot to be in. Maria has about 100,000 behind, and now I definitely think all the options are on the table. Definitely not folding, but calling or jamming. I think calling probably might be the best play because what worse hands is going to call my all-in on the turn here besides just the naked ace of diamonds that might actually fold. Anyways, for those reasons, I have a pretty bad one pair holding as my kicker isn't great. But the more I think about it, maybe I can get value from all the worst queen X holdings she can have. Who knows? But I just think that playing a river out of position against her would be a nightmare to navigate through. So I don't want to call off my stack if she jams because that would be a disaster. So I do the all in myself. I jam and she immediately announces that she can't fold. I mean, I fold so. And she ends up sticking it in, making the call with pocket aces and a diamond. So my diamond draw is totally dead. I'm drawing extremely thin to very few outs. Okay, time to double up Maria Ho until the river jack, the jack of hearts for a disgusting suck out. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is gross. Bink for us as I double up basically and stack Maria, but feels bad to suck out in this fashion. Really unfortunate, but I guess that's how poker goes. It's better to be lucky than good. Have to give huge props to playing with Maria. It's obviously a very fun experience playing with a legend of the game. And she took this bad beat really well and it feels pretty bad, but it was nice playing with you, Maria. <laughs> GG's. What a way to take out a poker legend, Ethan. Although by the speed at which you dragged her chips into your pile, it didn't seem like you cared too much. <laughs> nice hand. All right, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you, as always, for watching. We appreciate the support. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. That is what helps us grow the channel, and we appreciate your support as we attempt to do that. Until next week then, good luck of the felt.